the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, protecting the future of America's fowl. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, fowl were hunted in inhumane ways, causing several species to go extinct and endangering many more. Fowl in the United States were killed by the hundred thousands for commercial selling and processing. This brought up conflict between the environmentalists and hunters. Looking for a compromise, many attempts to solve this conflict led to the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, which set up regulations that protected the birds and provided a blueprint for future laws. Modern wildlife laws in the United States can trace their history back to early English legal restrictions conserving wildlife, such as the Statute of Westminster II enacted in 1285, which was a law regulating wild game. By the late 17th century, the American colonies each began to create hunting laws to prevent the depletion of wildlife resources by imposing gear restrictions, bag limits, and licensing requirements. But as time passed, state hunting laws were often ineffective and over-harvesting in all areas of wildlife continued, as exemplified by the notorious buffalo slaughter of 1870 and the extinction of the passenger pigeon, which was once the most numerous bird in America. By the late 1800s, a relatively small group of people, known as market hunters, began to hunt birds to sell their meat, feathers, and even beaks. Market hunters were also selling birds for the use of their feathers on hats and ornaments. Some hats were even made using the whole bird, Market hunters depleted the majority of the population of canvasback ducks and many more types of migratory birds. Steve Leck was here to tell us more about these market hunters. They devised means of harvesting as many waterfowl as they possibly could in as short a time as they possibly could because they only had a chance to get at them for relatively short periods of the year when they were in large flocks. During the breeding season, they were too dispersed but only during migration when they were in large flocks and ideally uh, sitting fairly close together on the water, um, the market hunters could harvest enough birds. These market hunters used many different techniques for killing as many birds as they possibly could in a short period of time. Some of these techniques were explosives and sneaking up on sleeping flocks to gain an edge on them. Although the main techniques used were large bore shotguns and punt guns, Six round shotguns were used to quickly take down flocks in the air and on the ground. Punt guns were the largest shotguns used at the time. Market hunters would load these guns with lead shot if they could afford it, and also rocks, nails, and anything they thought would work. As a result of these misfortunes, Congress made a very cautious first step into the field of wildlife regulation with the Lacey Act of 1900. The Lacey Act strengthened states' wildlife conservation laws by making the transportation of harvested wild animals or birds killed in violation of state law a federal crime. Because of the increased hunting of migratory birds, in 1913, Congress passed its first national wildlife conservation law, the Weeks-McLean Act, declaring all migratory game to be within the custody and protection of the United States. The act was passed as a rider to an appropriation bill for the Department of Agriculture and was almost immediately challenged and declared unconstitutional, largely on the basis of the state's property rights over game established in the U.S. Supreme Court in Gear v. Connecticut in 1896. In 1916, the United States entered into a treaty with Canada for the protection of migratory birds. Although the treaty could not directly improve bird conservation in Canada, the decision to focus on Canada meant the main accomplishment of the Migratory Bird Treaty would be to ward off those who challenge the constitutionality of the federal protection of migratory birds, since the treaty gives the federal government power over the state's rights claim. The treaty set hunting seasons, although there were exceptions for Eskimos and Indians, and explained a process to obtain exceptions to liability. This treaty was backed by the sport hunters and even ordinary people of America and Canada. They were concerned about not being able to dine on duck or any other fowl in the future. Pressure to pass the legislation came from hunters themselves, from sport hunters, uh, who recognized that the, uh, the market hunting, uh, along with habitat loss, the other thing that was happening uh, by the early 1900s was massive habitat loss, drainage of wetlands, uh, and they saw their resource, the, the waterfowl, uh, dwindling before their eyes. 
Finally, in 1918, the U.S. and Canada put the Migratory Bird Treaty Act into full effect throughout the U.S. and Canada after being ratified by the U.S. Senate and signed by President Wilson. The MBTA enabled the 1916 treaty and decided that all migratory birds and their parts were fully protected by the federal government. The Secretary of Interior was given the power to enforce the regulations to implement the prohibitions of the act and to determine when, if at all, migratory birds protected under the act could be taken. This set the hunting seasons for the migratory birds protected by the act and prohibited the hunting, killing, capturing, possession, sale, transportation, and exportations of birds, feathers, eggs, and nests. The first part of the treaty reads, an act to give effect to the conventions between the United States and other nations for the protection of migratory birds, birds in danger of extinction, game mammals, and their environment. This brought up conflict with the market hunters. Some of them started to hunt illegally while others lost their means of income. As in the past, the MBTA was continuously challenged by states because it federally protected these migratory birds. Since the state of Missouri lays directly on the migratory patterns and had a hunting season four months longer than the new law would allow, the state challenged the act as an invasion of its state rights. The challenge proved unsuccessful in the Supreme Court case of State of Missouri v. Holland in 1920 and the MBTA of 1918 was validated. Over the next few years, the bird population began to increase. The main impact of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, however, didn't come until years later through laws and amendments. In 1936, the MBTA was extended throughout the U.S. and Mexico and all of the migratory birds in these countries. Until this time, Mexico was politically unstable and not supportive of a conservation movement. In fact, when Mexico finally agreed to the Migratory Bird Treaty Act in 1936, American conservationists did not expect a major improvement in Mexican bird protection activities, even though the Mexican government did uphold the act. Later in 1960, the U.S. added an amendment to the MBTA. The amendment stated that violations of MBTA would receive a misdemeanor resulting in a fine of not more than $500 or imprisonment. Selling migratory birds would be subject to fine not more than $2,000 and imprisonment of a possible two years. Guilty offenses would receive a felony. In 1972, the treaty was extended again when Japan joined the treaty. Four years after that, Russia also signed the treaty. In 1998, the Migratory Bird Treaty Reform Act amended the Migratory Bird Treaty Act to make it unlawful to take migratory game birds by the aid of bait. It also is illegal to place bait on or near an area for the purpose of hunting, which is punishable with heavy fines and even imprisonment. Now, in 2018, the act itself is under attack, facing proposed changes that would undo the safety it provides for birds and causing conflict between the U.S. government and conservationists. Even though the Migratory Bird Treaty Act does not state that incidental killing of migratory birds is illegal, in recent years, some courts have ruled against it and penalized companies that have caused accidental bird deaths. The U.S. House of Representatives is now considering an amendment eliminating protection for migratory birds that fall victim to oil spills, wind turbines, and other energy infrastructure. The Department of Interior also stated in December 2017 that they will no longer enforce the Migratory Bird Treaty Act in cases of incidental bird deaths, revising a ruling put in place by the Interior Department 10 days before the current president took office, which said that incidental killing is prohibited under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. In conclusion, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918 helped to save bird species and keep hunting alive. Conservationists foresaw an extinction and foul species. Overhunting by market hunters was causing a depleted bird population and bird species to go extinct, which was a huge conflict. Market hunters disagreed with conservationists and sport hunters on the topic of hunting regulation. State laws also fought against federal hunting laws, claiming states' rights over federal control of wildlife in their states. Without these regulations and the governing of fowl hunting, there would be even more species extinct today. The negotiation of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act with Great Britain on Canada's behalf served as a compromise for the state's rights issue since a treaty gives the federal government power over the state's rights. After many years and many failed attempts, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918 was passed enforcing regulations on migratory bird hunting and protected the future of America's fowl.